this in a month and a day and then build on that. All the things. Now, most people know that a year is one revolution of the Earth around the Sun. Right? But the question is, how do you measure that? Right? Because if you have a, a simple 50-yard dash, you have a starting line and a finish line. So you get to the finish line, it's over. But if it's a circle, you circle the track, so then you have to put a mark on the track or a flag on the, on the side, and you know you complete a lap. So in outer space, there's no flag. There's no way to put a flag, it'll just orbit with you. So how do you know you actually completed one revolution of the Earth around the Sun? So there actually are three ways to measure a year. There's a sidereal year, an harmonistic year, and a tropical year. So the sidereal year is based on the Galgala Mazalos. As the Earth orbits the Sun, it puts the Sun in a different grouping of stars each month. The Earth is on one side of the Sun, and the stars are extremely far away. So they seem to be on a fixed background the, in the celestial sphere. There are groups of stars all over the place. And the plane of the Earth's orbit around the Sun is defined as the Galgala Mazalos, putting the Sun in a different group of stars each month, each 30 degrees as the Earth goes around the Sun. It's another month. So the Sun will be found in a different group of stars. There are approximately 54 Mazalos in the celestial sphere. In the ancient times, you didn't have all the modern entertainment of today, like television. So at night, there were two things that you could do to entertain yourself. You could either stare at the fire as it burned, or you'd go outside and pretend you saw, saw the animals in the story. Uh, some, somehow, they used their imagination to get these pictures. I don't get them, but they, they understood them. And they, they saw these uh, 12 mazalos that the Earth goes around putting the sun in. These are the main ones that we're concerned with in the Gemara, in the, in the Zodiac, in the astrology. Now, I don't know much about astrology, but in astronomy they count a, a year as one orbit of the Earth around the Sun relative to the backdrop back of the stars. It could be in Shor and Verse. In yeah, fact, the same year, a year later, once again the Sun will be in the same group. It's 365 and a quarter days, but it's slightly more than a quarter day. That's one way of measuring a year not the way we measure our years. The next way is the anomalistic year. The Earth's orbit around the Sun is an ellipse, putting the Sun closer to Earth in the beginning of January and further from the Earth in July. So the distance changes throughout the year and the speed of the Earth around the Sun also changes throughout the year because as we get closer to the Sun, the gravitational pull is greater, pulling it faster until it thrust, throws it out again and it slows down, and again, it repeats the pattern, speeds up, and slows down. Now, in ancient times, they didn't know the actual speed changed. They just thought it was a perfect circle, and the sun was off-center. It was a certain amount of eccentricity of the sun to the orbit. And therefore, even though they realized the speed changed, that was because they assumed that since you're not the center, so the distance changes, and as the distance of something changes, so does the apparent speed. Like if you have an airplane going at 20,000 feet, it could be going 700 miles an hour, but you can watch it go by slowly. Whereas if you're standing on the side of the train tracks and the train whizzes by at 50 miles an hour, it looks like it's gone in a few seconds. Because you're close to it. Anything that's close moves faster, and anything that's far away moves more slowly. That's the apparent motion. Now that's what they assumed in ancient times. Anyway, they knew that they, they completed one year when you got to the Makum Gova Hashemesh, the Rambam calls this, the highest point the sun is from the earth. That's Makum Gova Hashemesh. So when you got to Makum Gova Hashemesh again the next year, then you know you completed one year. That's also 365 and a quarter days. It's slightly more than a quarter day. It's also not the way we measure our years. So this changing speed will have with the moon also, and that's very important for the Gemaras in Rosh Hashanah. This is also the speed changing, changes in the area that it, it makes as it changes throughout the year. In the anomalous orbit, the actual orbit looks much closer to a circle. This is highly exaggerated. That's the second way to measure a year. The third way is the tropical year. Um, light. So the Earth, you see they make globes, they sell them, yeah. they put them at an angle, and there's a reason they put the globes at an angle. Because uh, 
not just because it looks fancy or it's easier to see the bottom half as you turn it. But it the, actually, the Earth's spin is tilted to the Galgala Mazalos. Right? So we said the Galgala Mazalos is the apparent motion of the sun around the Earth throughout the year. The Earth is tilted as it rotates to that, the rotation is tilted to that at 23 and a half degrees. So there's at one point of the year when the sun is over here, it's going to be summer in the southern hemisphere and winter in the northern hemisphere. As it gets to be Tukufa's Nisan, the sun is directly over the equator and it's basically 12 hour days every year, everywhere. It gets to be Tukufa's Tammuz, first day of summer, and the inclination is toward the sun from the northern hemisphere, giving us summer, and the southern hemisphere has their winter. As it continues to come Tishrei, it's once again at the equator, and the days are equal until it gets again to the winter. So this, the sun actually travels from its lowest point to its highest point, and then again to its lowest point throughout the year, relative to the tilt of the earth. That's the tropical year, and that's 365 and a quarter days, but it's actually slightly less than a quarter day, by uh, about 11 minutes or something like that, which doesn't sound like much. But when you're adding a leap year every four years, eventually it's going to be way off. This was the basis of the calendar until about the 1500s. This is a Julian calendar. It's called Tukufa Shmuel. Ibn Ezra writes in his time it was already off by nine days. And he said Shmuel knew that it wasn't exact. But even so, that it's used for the St. Halamatar and for Berch HaSachama. We use Tukufa Shmuel because it's an easy approximation to use. Pope Gregory in the 1500s realized it was already off by 11 days, and therefore he adjusted the calendar. He, instead of making a leap year every four years, which would be 100 leap years in 400 years, he took out three leap years. So it's only 97 leap years in 400 years instead of 100 leap years. And that adjusts for the difference, and they took out 11 days from the calendar, and there were riots in Europe because they thought they lost 11 days from their lives. So uh, the Americas actually adopted it a couple hundred years later. So there was a discrepancy, discrepancy in the calendars between Europe and America until the 1700s when they started using it in America also. That's the calendar that's in use now, the Gregorian calendar. And it's closer to Tukubis of Adab or Ahava, which is adding seven leap years in the 19 year cycle, which is what our calendar is based on. So there are two ways of defining uh, the, the we had the three ways of defining the year, and the one we use is the tropical year. Now, in a year, there are no months. Months only have to do with the moon. The word moon and month come from one another. The cycle around the Earth by the moon is a month. However, since a year is a very long time, and you have the, only the four seasons, you can split it into seasons. To give us the idea of the, the equinox, twice a year, the one in spring and the one in autumn. And then you have the solstice, in the winter and in the summer, you have two solstices and two equinox. So you have four seasons in the year. But if anything goes by the seasons, so you, if you're getting paid once a season, it's 90 days, so people thought it was too long, so they split it into months, each season having three months, basically. So these months both are in the solar year and, and in the Jewish year is also in Tukufas, they divide into Tukufas, Tukufas Tammuz, and then Tukufas Tishrei, Tukufas Nisan, and Tukufas Tevis. So they also are split into months of Tukufa. So Tishrei has after 30 days after the beginning of Tukufa, it's Tukufas Cheshwan. And then 30 days after that is Tukufas Kislev, which is when we say the Saint Halamata. It goes with the Tukufa and not with the actual lunar date, not with, the, not with the moon. So there are some things we use the Tukufa for. And also, yeah, so that, those are the months of the Tukufa. The Gemara has a shadow of what do you do for Tu Bishvat. Tu Bishvat is dependent on the seasons. The rainy seasons are dependent on the tilt of the earth. So it should be a solar date. So maybe we should do Tu Bishvat 45 days after the Tukufa's Tevis. Tukufa's Tevis, then 30 days later is Tukufa Shvat, and the 15th of Shvat should be the day of Tuba Shvat. It should be not a lunar date, but a solar date. 
That's what the Gemara has such a halakha in it, but the Gemara says even so we use the, the lunar date and not the solar date. We use it with the advance of the, the moon. Now, being that the sun goes up and down from 23 and a half degrees north to 23 and a half degrees south of the equator, the size of shadows changes throughout the year. When the sun is high up, you have smaller shadows. When it's low down, you have longer shadows. It says in uh, the Malachim came to Avraham Avinu, they drew a line on the wall and said, when the, when the sun gets to this line, Sarah will have a baby. So the question is, when did they come to Avraham? Rashi and Chomish learns that they came on Pesach and Yitzchak was born on Pesach. The Gemara in Rosh Hashanah says they came on Sukkot because it says Lamoi the next Yom Tov. If it's Pesach they came, then next Shavuot is not enough time to have a baby in 50 days. So if they came on Shavuot, it's also five months, it's not sufficient time. So they had to come on Sukkot and it was a leap year and therefore Yitzchak was born on Pesach. Everyone agrees yet Yitzchak was born on Pesach. How does it work out with the shadows? If you learn they came on Pesach and then they came back on Pesach, the shadows should be in basically the same place. But if they came on Sukkot, now that we explain this, we can explain the, the shadows. Yeah, to, yeah. To, 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 to. So the tropical year has the four months that we just said. So this is Tukubus Tishrei, Tabus. This would be Tukubus over here. And then here's Tukufas Nisan, and this is Tukufas Tammuz, when the northern hemisphere has summer. Now, you have the shadow in the winter is very tall, and in the summer it gets shorter. So every point on the wall, it hits twice. So a day before Tukufas Tammuz will be the same place as it is the day to after Tukufas Tammuz. A day before Tukufas uh, Tukufas Tevis will be the same as the day after Tukufas Tevis. The day before Tukufas Dison will be the same as the day after Tukufas Dison. So if the Malachim came on Sukkos, so that year was the leap year, so Tukufas Tishrei would be Sukkos. So Sukkos came out two weeks before Tukufas Tishrei, and then the sun was a little bit higher than its lowest, than the, the, the center line, and they came away again. Two weeks after, to Kufas this and the sun will be the same spot. Seven months later, the sun is on the same spot. It was two, two weeks before the Tukufa, two weeks after the Tukufa. And that's Pshat and Gemara in Rosh Hashanah, that they came on Sotos and on Pesach. Now, if we go back to the first Pshat of Rashi and Chomish, that they came on Pesach, we've got a little bit of a problem. Because it's a, the solar year is 365 days, and that's what the shadows are dependent on. Whereas the lunar year is only 354 days. So you have an 11 day discrepancy. So the shadow is not going to be in the same place on the first day of Pesach and it's going to be next year on the first day of Pesach. So this is a slight problem. It could be the Malachim didn't draw the shadow where the sun was right then. They drew the shadow where the sun would be in 11 days. And therefore it worked out that the next year the sun was in the same place. That could be. But I heard another answer from uh, Marsha Friedman. He said to Shem, his father, it's Vidu Friedman in Toronto. I heard it from him many years ago. He said, it could be the Malach who said it was her fall. Her fall came to heal Avraham Avinu on the third day of his Mila. Three days after the Mila, he healed Avraham. And he said, I'll come next year to do the same for Yitzchak. Yitzchak was Nimo Lishmana. And he, was, he came three days later. That makes up for the 11 day discrepancy. All right, so those are the three ways we have of measuring a year. In the months, you have also the same three ways of measuring a month. We could do the sidereal month when the moon gets to its same place relative to the stars, or the anomalistic month when the moon in its orbit gets to its fastest point closest to Earth at perigee, and then again it goes to apogee when it's furthest away, and then again it comes again to perigee, its closest point cl to Earth. That could be another way of measuring month. And then the tropical month, when it gets the same place on Earth relative to the tilt of the Earth. So a sidereal month is approximately 27 and a, and a third day. The an anomalistic month is approximately 27 and a half days. And the tropical month is about 27 and a third days. Those are three ways of measuring a month. But in addition, there are another two ways to measure a month.
is a draconic month. We mentioned that the sun goes around the earth once a year in the Galgala Bazolos, exactly on the, the line that uh, the sun goes around the earth, that defines the ecliptic. The moon does basically what the sun does in a year, the moon does in a month. It goes also around the Galgala Mazalos, around the earth. Now, if it were in the exact same path, you would have an eclipse twice a month. Once in the Moilad, when the earth is on one side, and the sun is the other, and the moon's in the middle, it would cast a shadow on the earth, making an eclipse of the sun. And then again, half a, half a month later, when it's in opposition, and the moon would be traveling through the shadow of the earth. You would have another lunar eclipse. So you should have an eclipse twice a month. But the reason we don't is because the moon's path around the earth is inclined to the Galgala Mazalos by five degree inclination. So therefore it goes above, the Kudus Rosh, the Rambam calls it, as it travels above the ascending node, and then it goes again below the ecliptic at the descending node. So it's going up and down every month, above and below the, de- the ecliptic. So unless the Moilet or the Nigud happens near the mode of the, the, near the node of the moon, when it's ascending or descending, you will not have an eclipse. That's why we don't have an eclipse every month. That's the Deuteronomy. And that's approximately 27 and a fifth days. So we have these four ways of measuring a month, and you, you obviously know that they're shorter than the month that we measure at 29 and a half days. So why is there this two-day difference? That's because we're measuring a synodic month. The synodic month is based on the moon. So what happens? Let's say the moon, you have a new moon between the Earth and the Sun, and it continues it's relative to the stars, it's already in the same place, to the backdrop of the stars. But it's not yet between the Earth and the Sun. It'll have to travel another two days to make up that difference. That clear? If I'm going too fast, just tell me. Okay, so we have, this is the synodic month, the month that we measure 29 and a half days. Now, we mentioned before that the speed of the moon changes, just like the speed of the Earth around the sun changes because of the anomalistic orbit. So, too, does the speed of the moon around the Earth change throughout the month because of its anomalistic orbit, right? The the Earth is not in the center of the orbit. Therefore, the moon moves faster when it's close to Earth. Its gravitational pull is stronger, and it moves faster, and it moves more slowly when it's further from Earth. So being that the speed of the moon is changing constantly, so the, the amount that it has to make up is not necessarily going to be made up in the same amount of time. If it's in its anomalistic orbit close to the Earth, it will make up this different difference in less than two days. Where if it's further from Earth at this time of the month, then it will make up that difference in more than two days. So therefore, they announced the Moilet and the Shul, what they're announcing it is, is an average. You will not see the eclipse happen at the time they mentioned in Shul last Shabbos. Because even if it's the Moilad, that's only an average. It could be off by many hours, by up to 14 hours either direction, either before or after. Therefore, it's Pamim Baba Ketzorah, Pamim Baba the Gemara says. Sometimes the moon takes a longer path. That means it's further away from Earth, and it will take longer to make up the two days. And sometimes it's closer to Earth, and it will take a shorter time to make up the two days. And the Bayesian would have to calculate this in order to know if it was possible to see the new moon based on the Adam. The Adam come to say we saw the new moon. They have to figure out, did you have enough time from the Moilad till the time that they claim to have seen the moon that it's possible to even see it. That's calculated by Bayesian, and therefore they don't know if the Adam are telling the truth or not. So they, they're going to have to calculate, was it a short month or a long month? Was it 29 and a half days plus, or was it 29 and a half days Minus. So they make those calculations, and then they know if the Adam are telling the truth or not. Do you make those calculations for Kedesh Salama, or do you rely on the average? Oh, oh, so this is a good question. Let's do that now. We'll get to that. Okay, this is another thing of the same thing. They, they have to make this an op- the moon is in opposition relative to the stars, and then the next month it's in opposition again relative to the stars, but it's not yet a full moon, because it has to be relative to the stars. Okay, now... <coughs> 
When is the first one Kiddush Lavan? <coughs> I'm glad you asked. What is a new moon? The new moon is when it's in between the earth and the sun. So at that point, the light side is facing the sun and the dark side is facing the earth, so all you see is nothing. Right? You can't see that because it's, it's dark. And even if you would look for it and, and be able to see the outline, the brightness of the sun would blot it out and you wouldn't be able to see anything. Unless there's a solar eclipse, you cannot see a, a new moon. You can't see the moon. Most of you learn, you only see it a day later when the moon has progressed around in its orbit. It's around here a day after the Mu'alad. Then you can see the thin sliver of the moon, the people standing over here on Earth. At Shkia time, you can see a thin sliver. The people anywhere else cannot see it. Over here, the moon will not yet have risen. And over here, the sun is too bright to see it. So you have to be standing shortly after Shkia, right over here, and you'll see the new moon. A quarter of the month, you'll see half the moon. Three-eighths, you see a, a waxing gibbous. Then you'll see a full moon at half the month. The full moon, the Gemara says, is a sign for the sailors on the sea that they have to get rid of their chametz. Why do they have to get rid of the chametz? Because it's the middle of the month, and the middle of the month is the 14th day. Why is it the 14th? Because we said the Mu'lad, you cannot yet see the moon. The Adam only came a day later. So it's 15 days from the Mu'lad, which is the 14th day of the month. Right? Because the first day, no one can see the moon. The, the Kiddush HaChodesh is, the, when Basim's Makadosh HaChodesh was the day after the Mu'lad. That's when the Adam could first see the moon and come and he made it. So seeing, being that Kiddush HaChodesh was always a day later, so the... 15th of the, of the 15 days after the month, it was the 14th day of the month. Get rid of the chametz. Now, there's a book, The Youngest Partisan. He was recently nifted from COVID, but he was fighting with the Russian, in, he was fighting against the Germans with the Russians there in the mountains, near Pressburg, in that area. And he was a Frumyid, so he was keeping Pesach. They, he didn't let on that he was a Frumyid to the soldiers, but they would have killed him probably. But he decided, uh, he went outside and saw the full moon and knew that it was the 15th of the month. So he decided next eight days he won't have any chametz. The problem was he went out the next night and the moon still looked full. So okay, he was a day off, so I'll keep an extra day. He went out the next night and it still looked full. He said that year he kept Passover for 12 days. So he didn't eat chametz for 12 days. Now, if he would have looked for the simon of the Gemara, he would have been much, much uh, more accurate and he wouldn't have had to add so many days. I think he would have, he, he probably had an extra day that he didn't have to anyway, because the Sveka the Yoma covers one day. The whole reason we keep Pesach eight days nowadays in Chutzlar is in case the Goyim ever make a, a Matzav like that, where we cannot know the dates. Well, be, we had one day because of that. So that was already taken into account. So I think he added more days than he had to anyway, but. If he had do, done this, looked for the simon of the moon rising at sunset or the sun rising at, at moonset, either way, he would have known that the, the month is half over, and therefore he can, uh, he, he would have known the date of the month much more accurately. Now, Kiddush Lavano, you can only say as the moon is growing. Once the moon starts getting smaller, you can no longer say Kiddush Lavano. So the time the, the Ramah says is take the average month, cut it in half, so you take the Mailad and add 14 and 3 quarters days to the Mailad, and that's the same month as the Banna. That's what the Ramah says. The Shulchan Aruch is a little bit more makele, it says that just add 15 days, so the Svarnam are a little bit more, more makele in this. That's the same month as the Banna. So can you do it if you know that the half the month is over? Well, there's a base Yosef that says, that if you see a lunar eclipse, you can no longer say Kiddush Lavana. A lunar eclipse is a sign that the moon is moving through the Earth's shadow. Once that happens, you know it's in Nigur Amiti, and after that's going to be getting smaller. Therefore, you can no longer say Kiddush Lavana. That being the case, we have another simon. Do I have to physically see the, <coughs> the lunar eclipse? Probably not. If somebody goes out, comes out in from outside and says, I just saw the lunar eclipse, I also can't take it as Lebanon. What if somebody calls me from Israel, well, I saw the lunar eclipse, I also can't take it as Lebanon because I know what happened, right? So, 
if anyone sees the sun rising at moonset or the moon setting at sunrise, they've also just seen a sign of opposition. And they know that the half the month is over, and therefore the moon is now going to get smaller, and therefore you should not take it to Shlavana. You could be Samech on this Lukula also. If you know that this month has not yet come, if you walk out at night at sunset, and you see the moon has already risen, then you know that Nikud has not yet happened. And therefore you could say Kiddush Lavana still. Because if Nikud would happen, that means the moon would not have yet have risen at sunset. The moon rises later every night by approximately 50 minutes, because it goes around the whole thing in 30 days. So that's approximately 12 degrees every day. Which is, since the Earth spins once a day on its axis, that's 360 degrees divided by 24 hours, so it's 15 degrees every hour. So the moon moves 12 degrees a day around, because it's 360 degrees in 30 days, so it's 12 degrees further from the sun, which is approximately 48 minutes, but slightly more. It's left approximately 50 minutes, because it's only 29 and a half days. And therefore, it sets later every night, and you can actually tell the time from the moon. The Chazanish was once walking up outside and he asked somebody, what time is it? And he said, then he saw the moon and said, no, I don't need you. He just looked at the moon and he knew what time it was. And the Gedolim knew how to do this. Yaakov Kamenetsky was once in, once in a car headed to Mansi and he told the driver, you're heading the wrong way. So he said, I just looked at the signs and I'm going the right way. Rabbi Yaakov told him, well, I just looked at the constellation. You're going northeast, not northwest. And uh, of course, Rabbi Yaakov was right. So, that being the case, I, I, I feel that you could be Saimachan the Nigur Amiti instead of the average Bein Lekula, Bein Lechumra. For sure Lekula, you could be Saimachan it if you know that the moon's still growing. And many of the Luchas are now starting to publish in Nigur Amiti, for sure there's as well. I don't know here if they've started to do that in the Sons of Mankish Levada. They have the average time has been published for years. But I, I think it's more common to now have the Nigur Amiti also the actual opposition. Okay, now, uh, flip on the lights, please. And we have the... Oops. Someone, if someone sees a sword, what can they do to catch the thunderstorm? No, you didn't see the moon. You didn't have to... You, you, you can see the, the moon at the backdrop of the sun. Well, you see the, the, you, what you're seeing is the moon coming in between the earth and the sun, but I've never heard that... The news, the more never mentioned that that can be used for Kiddush and for saying that they saw the moon. You have to actually see the Hezerah of the Re'eva Kadesh. Hashem said, at least, you need at least, even Rashi and Tosh will hold at least, at least six hours after the mother. No one ever said that an eclipse is good enough. You have to actually see the thin slip of the moon, which most of you shall learn is the day after the mother. It's not less than a day. Now, the Earth spins on its axis every day, creating a day. That's two ways to measure a day also, just like we had seven ways to measure a month and a year. There are two ways to measure a day. You can measure a day relative to the backdrop of the stars. So the Earth makes one rotation on its axis in 23 hours, 56 minutes, and a few seconds, relative to any group of stars. That's a very accurate way of measuring, because the stars are on a fixed background that doesn't move. And the Earth's spin is basically a constant speed. So you can do it in 20, 23 hours, 56 minutes, and a few seconds. Not, not the way we measure our days, obviously. We use a much less accurate way, but it, it makes for a solar day based on the sun. And the sun is in the same position at Chatzois. Chatzois Ayom, to the same position, Chatzois Ayom, a day later, 24 hours later, that's the way we measure our days. That being the case, we have four places on the earth, just like we had four times of the year. The year split to four seasons Tishrei, Nisan, Thomas and Tavis, the earth is split, the day is split into four times. Chatzor Sayom, Chatzor Salayla, Shkia and Zricha. You have four points on the earth that's happening constantly. Now that's actually Pshat, in, according to the Psalm, that what Pesach had happened at Chatzor Salayla. Now Pesach, we know, it means to jump over. Rashi brings that up. Hashem jumped over the Jewish houses, he killed the Mitzvah. If it happened at Chatzor Salayla for everyone, then it wasn't sequential. If, it, if there was jumping, it's sequential. <coughs> so, that is, there's a line of Chatzos Halayla, and as the Earth spins, 
They moved along the Nile Delta, killing the people in the east side first, and then everyone at the exactly Chatzos for where they were. And that's chat. And uh, they all died at Chatzos, but it was jumping over from house to house. As also we say in Birchas HaShachar, so we say, Birchas HaShachar, Tamid. Now, Tamid in, means in the Chumash different things. Sometimes it means constant, and sometimes it means daily. Our last Tamid is daily. The near Tamid was lit daily. The uh, Lechem Hapanim was ta- the Fanai Tamid, so that means they had a, always, the Shulchan always had Lechem Hapanim on it. The, according to Rabbi Hudi, they had to actually move it in as they're taking the old ones out. The, Hands of the coin were next to the hands of the ones removing it. The tzitz was Tamil al Rosh, and he had a constant thick without the siyatas, and the tzitz, or was mechaper Tamil, but that there it means constantly. So sometimes it means daily, and sometimes constantly. So if there's a sunrise daily, b'chol yom, then what's the Tamil? So according to this, it explains it. We have sunrise, for each person on earth, they see sunrise daily. But it's also Tami. The sun is constantly rising somewhere on earth as the earth spins. So it's Bechol Yom Tami. Try to cover how much more time do we have? No, about 15 minutes. Okay. So we're going to get to the top. There's a famous Bala Moor discussing the date line. Now, the Gemara says over there in Rosh Hashanah, there's one very difficult Gemara about, uh, we don't, the, the moon is hidden for 24 hours, six of them, eight, 18 for us, 18 for them, <coughs> six for us, the new moon, the old moon, and Rashi and Tosus give a shot that's very difficult to understand, but uh, the Bala Morkai came up with an incredible shot to explain this, and based on that, the Chazanish, drew the date line where he did. He says there are four points on the earth. Balamor says there's the Kenegat Yerushalayim, and directly opposite on the opposite side, Lev Hayam, in the middle of the Pacific. And there's the edge of the edge of the land mass to the west, and the edge of the land to the east. Those are the four points on earth that we're concerned with. So he said, even though the Gemara normally, when it says the Tul Yidan, it means Eretz Yisrael and Babel, in this Gemara it does not mean Babel. It means the edge of the eastern continent, which is the edge of Asia, basically the edge of China, which is approximately six hours from Eretz Yisrael, because Babel is only about two hours. You don't get six hours. So there's one place on earth that's going to see the moon first. He said, Right? As the earth spins, the line of Shkia is where they will first see the moon. Because it grows dark. During the day, the, sun, the brightness of the sun is going to obscure the view of the thin sliver of the moon that's very close to the sun. Too much after Shkia, just like the sun sets as the earth spins, the moon will also set. Because the spinning of the earth is what causes everything to rise and set. So as the earth spins, the sun will set, the moon being 12 degrees later will set about 50 minutes after the sun and you won't see it anymore. So the only place they can see it is the thin line at Shkia. About 20 minutes, half an hour after Shkia, they'll see the new moon. And uh, they can be, they're, they're, they're the first ones to see it. So if the first ones to see it were in Eretz Yisrael, so then Bavel and anything further west will only see it later. The edge of the continent, the edge of China, will only see it six hours later. Because <coughs> actually, it's strange. Eretz Yisrael has Shkia. No, the China will see it 18 hours later. That's what it will be. Okay, you can flip on the light. Let's see. So the new moon, the, the sun is over here, and the new moon is over here. The right side faces the sun. The thin sliver is visible from the line of Shkia. So, if our line of Shkia is over here, as the earth spins, so if Eretz Yisrael is the first place to see it, Eretz Yisrael is right at Shkia, 
So China wouldn't have seen it when they had Shkia. They'll have to wait another 18 hours until they have Shkia to see the moon. Because when they have, right now the moon is not even in their sky. It has to spin around till there, until the moon even gets to the sky. Then it's daytime, they won't see it till the night. So it's 18 hours after it's Israel. Whereas if China were the first ones to see it, the edge of the continent, then Eretz Yisrael will see it six hours later. If they were the first ones to see it, then as it'll spin six hours later, Eretz Yisrael will see it. And the opposite is true for the old moon that's on the opposite side. The old moon's facing the sun also. The only ones who can see it are the slightly before sunrise. After sunrise, the sun will be up and the brightness of the, of the sun will obscure the vision of the moon. Before that, it still hasn't risen because it's still in the middle of the night and the earth has to turn enough for the moon to get up. So if China were the last ones to see the old moon, then Eretz Yisrael will have only seen it 18 hours prior to that. So if China's over here and the old moon is visible to them, so Eretz Yisrael saw it 18 hours prior to that. After, six hours later, they won't see it anymore because it will already be too close to the sun. Whereas if Eretz Yisrael was the last one to see the, the old moon, then China saw it six hours prior to them. Right? If Eretz Yisrael is over here, <coughs> so China is now at Chatzos. <coughs> so Eretz Yisrael were the last ones to see the, the old moon. <coughs> so China already six hours didn't see it. The, the la their last vision of it was six hours prior. That's the way the Balamor learns the Gemara. And the Chazan, the Balamor says, why is this the case? Why did the Gemara pick 18 and, and 6? Because when does the day end? If Eretz Yisrael is in the middle of uh, the day, so their day, their day will end at Shkia. If they get to Shkia, then the day in Eretz Yisrael will end. However, in Europe, it's still another couple of hours later. In America, it's six, seven hours later. In California, it's ten hours later. Where does it end? If Shabbos and Eretz Yisrael ended already, 10 hours ago, we just ended two hours ago, California is still Shabbos, Hawaii's got another few hours on, on top of that. When is Shabbos over for the whole world? So based on this Balamor, he says, it's six hours from Eretz Yisrael to the east. That's where the end is. So anything on the continent goes with Eretz Yisrael. The ocean, all the islands that are at that line, six hours east of Eretz Yisrael, that's the last place in the world that will end the day. Therefore, the Gemara says, you need at least six hours from, from the Moilad before Shkia in order to make that day Rosh Hashanah. The Balamor says, this is talking about when you don't have base anymore, and then not become Shapiriya. It still has to have some similarity that the moon should be seen somewhere in the world for that day to be Rosh Hashanah. So being that the moon in Eretz Yisrael was already, the Moilar already happened by Chatzos Hayom, not the Kodim the Chatzos, not the Kodim Chatzos, and that they could be Rosh Hashanah. Now the Acher Chatzos is too late, because it will be seen after Shkia. So based on that, the Chazmish says that if that's the case, the Balamor just said the day ends, the date line should be six hours east of Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, when the Mir Yeshiva was in Japan the first year after they got out of Europe, some of them already got to the mainland to Shanghai, but a lot of them were stuck in Japan for Yom Kippur. And they passed in, the Chazanish passed for them, that they, their Yom Kippur was after America. So it, it's actually no gay every Shabbos in Japan. But uh, in, then it, it wasn't really no gay Shabbos because no one was working. They, they, they were all un, unemployed. They were running away from the Germans, so they didn't really have work to do. But the Yom Kippur, they had no which day they could eat. And, the yeshiva did the psak of the Chazanish. I asked somebody who was there, Rabbi Fabian, he was there at the time, he was in Kuala, he was just married, and uh, he was there, and he said, the yeshiva, Pasuk the Chazanish, there may have been Yechidim that did both days, but the yeshiva just Pasuk the Chazanish. Uh, however, this is a big mafloikis, so and it's Nogea, this entire quadrant, because of Kuczynski says you go 18, uh, you go 12 hours from Mary's as well. Exactly the opposite, uh, not six hours, so you have a, an entire portrait of the globe. All the islands in the Pacific, in that area, have the uh, suffix of which day to keep Shabbos, Yom Tov. There's an island off the coast of Australia, uh, 
Prince Island, there's a bridge to go from Melbourne to that island, and a lot of people go on vacation there. So the Shlom Yidin don't go on Sunday because that's for the Shabbos on that island. My friend told me he was in Australia, in Cholamayid. He was going on a Cholamayid trip. He said, you know, our problem with Sfer He was going to go to Prince Island overnight and stay there overnight. He said, our problem with Sfer Sfer He said, Sfer Sfer It's Yom Tov there. You can't even drive on the bridge. So that's a problem a little bit. And the, there are Poyskim who say each way. It depends. A lot of people go from Los Angeles to Hawaii, and Hawaii is actually in the Suffolk. If you look carefully on the globe, and there are different post schemes, there are different things to Hawaii. And I heard about a family that went to Hawaii for Pesach. And it was a Tuesday, Wednesday Pesach. And they wanted to be machmer both shitos. So, not Tuesday, Wednesday, so again, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday was Yom Tov. The last days are Monday, Tuesday. So Thursday was Holy Monday. Friday, Shabbos was Shabbos. And then Sunday, Monday, Tuesday was Yom Tov. And uh, they never go to Hawaii again. <laughs> Five day Yom Tov. Okay. <laughs> it could be, I'm not sure, but it could be the speak of the Yoima of the extra day that we do Yom Tov two days would also help for this, and they, that it should include it. I'm not sure. But it might, it might, you might not have to do it for Yom Tov, but Shabbos you definitely have a problem. It could be Yom Tov, the Sveik of the Yom Tov will, will cover the, the topic of, of this also. I, that, I, it's not clear to me. Um, okay. 